right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Spreedly's history, else, uh, especially from a sales evolution perspective. Um, and I'll stop regularly for questions, and I hope I, I get them. So that's me up there shining bright. Uh, so a little bit about my story from a sales perspective. I came to sales a little bit later, like I got into sales, I think I was about 28 or 30, I'd done other things. I had some stereotypes about sales, you know, cheesy salespeople, was it a real discipline? Uh, and I didn't really want to go and do it, and I did some other things, so like partner management. Uh, and finally, a boss said, I think you'd be good in direct sales. And I got into it and, and I loved it. And I realized like it's a discipline. It's a really, you know, if you do it well, it's very rewarding. And I did it for a startup at that time based in the Bay Area. Uh, we got up to about 50 people. I ended up running sales as I went through, you know, went from being a salesperson to running the team. Uh, and then we got acquired. The next move was a big company. I'd never worked for a big company. I worked for a company out of Baltimore called SafeNet. Uh, and then I had, that was a very big company. I, I had a sales team in the Americas. And I did that for two years. And I didn't enjoy that at all. Uh, and I realized what I liked about sales was being at the table with product, with engineering, with finance, and kind of building that together when I worked for a much bigger company with just a territory. I, for me personally, I was removed from that decision making. I didn't like like that. And so that was a good segue into going and starting, joining Spreely and getting started at Spreely. The startup I was at, we were SaaS before it was called SaaS. Uh, we worked with big technology companies and helped them move software shipments online. So they're all CDs and boxes. Uh, so we had to build the infrastructure to do that. You know, people would say, do you really think a hundred megabyte file can travel across the internet, young man? And the answer was yes, luckily. But so for me, my whole experience, that was just fortunate. My whole experience was an outsourced, uh, outsourced service in SaaS. Um, and our average deal size there was we had about 50 or 60 customers uh, paying us about $250,000 a year. So as a startup, that meant if we did four or six deals a year, we were really happy. So sort of enterprise uh, hunting for big deal sales. So Spreedly, we're in payments specifically in online payments. And we have this belief that payments are better if they're open and diversified and everybody's involved. Uh, payments are a lifeblood. They're, they're literally a lifeblood of businesses. They're also human. People, you know, collecting payments, making payments is a very personal thing. It's regional and it's cultural. So the more open and the more diverse it is, the better we think it is. Uh, there are natural forces around companies getting bigger, uh, regulatory issues from governments that continually force payments into sort of a closed ecosystem. So it's not just a feel-good mission. It's something that, uh, that we feel like is an important counterweight to the natural kind of driving forces to consolidate payments into some very big players. Uh, we welcome merchants and we welcome, welcome payment service providers as well uh, into our platform. And we're growing. So, you know, this is, a, this is a nice slide. I remember every step of the way. Uh, it looks nice when you can post it like this. Uh, back in 2013, we got our first angel funding uh, and we were doing about 100,000 transactions, credit card transactions a month. Um, and that's now up to about 20 million transactions a month. Uh, and uh, we did, we just raised some money and we're hiring for sales roles. And that's why you'll see some Spreely folks here. So uh, if you're interested in continuing to climb the mountain, uh, which that is uh, hopefully reflecting, then, then we'd love to talk to you if we didn't already. Okay, so when we began, for me, I was coming out of this enterprise world, and, and Spreely was, at the time we started Spreely services, you know, ever heard of Stripe, the payment provider? Twilio? So there was this, there was this wave, the, you know, 2010 and onwards was, hey, developers are now decision makers, and developers are now buyers, and you can scale API services you know, and, and build companies around that. So we were excited by that. We saw their early traction and we wanted to kind of copy that. So when we first began, our sales strategy was really a development strategy. Uh, when the company was 20 people, we were about 16 people in development related roles. And so the idea was, 
build a really good set of documentation, build a really good service, allow people to come in and test whenever they want, uh, only answer questions that are inbound, allow them to swipe a credit card and get going. And, and we have customers today that are paying us two hundred, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars a year that, that literally came in at a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars a month, and and grew like that. Payments in particular is also a little bit like that. You you're trying to f you you onboard ten merchants every month if you can, and once a quarter you have someone that just takes off and gets a lot of traction, and you ride with them. So our early strategy was hey, we don't really have a sales strategy. And, and for me, that was so different and kind of refreshing after all these years of highly stressful enterprise sales to just wake up in the morning and see someone had swiped a credit card overnight and, and become a customer. And we had this API story. We had anybody, you know, the question, if you, we got a question from a prospect, hey, can I make it do this? And we're like, yeah, sounds plausible. Uh, if you can, then you're a customer. Uh, and so that was also, I'd love to say, we had a very verticalized strategy to begin with, but it was really this open API and, and people were building really interesting things on it. Um, and, and we were encouraging that. So over time, our customers grew. So in 2015, our average customer was worth about $290 or you know, a, little under, a little over $3,000 a year. Um, and by 2018, we're seeing that be $12,000, $13,000 per year, an average customer. So that starts to change the dynamics. That's a different type of customer. Um, they're not just happy, always happy, just swiping a credit card and having online support. They start to want to talk to humans. They start to need a contract. They start to care about SLAs. And so phase one for us was, hey, we created these short form contracts contracts and we started having like a dedicated account manager. Uh, so still really taking baby steps uh, as our customers grew, but recognizing that as they grew over time, we had to change um, still very all inbound, all SEO. We wrote good content. We even wrote good content that wasn't spreely specific but it was developer specific. And, when the, and that really caught some attention of developers and was shared. And so that meant our blog was thought of favorably by Google. And so it lifted up all of our content uh, that was very payment specific. So that was a great channel for us. And then we started doing our first enterprise deals. Um, and this was really myself and the CTO acting as an outside salesperson and an SE in effect. Uh, our very first uh, enterprise deal was with SeatGeek, uh, and they came down from New York. Uh, they were an existing customer, and we sat in Mateo, and we negotiated a $150,000 a year contract, and I think our biggest one prior to that was 50. So we felt pretty good, you know. Uh, came swaggering out of there, CEO, CTO, high-fiving each other. Uh, and, and and so that was, uh, that was a really great win for us. And that we said, okay, maybe we should take this a little bit more seriously. So we hired uh, our first account executive, our first sort of standalone salesperson. Uh, she worked for us out of Arizona. And then we began to hire some AMs as well. But we're still, even then, uh, you know, our AE was sort of this ad hoc process, right? Like, so if someone came in and wanted to have an agreement and didn't want to use the service online, uh, or if someone was using it and got up to $3,000 a month or $4,000 a month and said, can I have an agreement? We said, go talk to Jenna. Like, Jenna's the ad hoc process, you know? Uh, and, and gave her a quota like that. The other thing, as we began to sort of do these enterprise agreements, we realized using the product was this key difference, you know, in terms of speed to closure. So those customers that use the service, an agreement was often just literally a negotiation two to four weeks. People that came and said, my company won't let me use the service till I have something on paper. We had to go through all the traditional steps of sort of trust and, 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 on, and, and both from, from a product perspective for proof, trust of the company, and really we sort of drew things out. So, uh, so we focus and we still focus as much as we can whenever it's viable to have them use the service because it's one of the advantages of having this ability. You can come in and not talk to us and get set up and swipe a card for a couple hundred bucks and have the same production experience as someone paying us 200,000. So 
why not go ahead and do that? So, so a big lesson for us back then, uh, and a big lesson for us is to get them using it. And that was the other thing is, you know, people that, that signed the contract, they just immediately ramped their volume because they were already on it. Uh, when people haven't used it yet, they sign it, and then you got to hope they launch. If they don't launch for a little while, that's problematic. And, of course, if they don't launch at all, that's really problematic. Okay, so I think it was, was it late 2017, Kelly? Thank you. It's good to have people around you that are better at dates. So, so now we're chugging along. I think we probably hit about a $5 million run rate. So in terms of size of the company, where we were at. And I realized I was woefully underinvesting in sales and marketing and product. And, and I was, it was the cobbler's shoe problem, right? I felt comfortable if someone wanted it, I could rush, could go do it. Um, but it really wasn't uh, good leadership on my behalf. It really wasn't smart. And so, so if we went and hired a head of sales, uh, Kelly, who's here. I'm going to make a stand. Woo! Uh, head of marketing, Peter Mullins, and a head of product, Daniel Weidman. And we said, okay, we really have to start to ha develop an outbound strategy. Who are we going to focus on and why? One of our engineers, he's actually up in the top right-hand corner, came up with this target ACES, and that's um, accelerating commerce enterprises. So we realized that who we were most valuable to was people doing online payments that valued flexibility. Because that was really our story. You could switch providers, you could go into a new region quickly, you could do things really quickly if you're on our platform that you couldn't if you weren't. And so we looked at people that were accelerating, uh, people who were growing fast, they were the most interesting for us. And this is when marketing began to build a list, and this is where RevBoss, uh, we have used them very effectively and very happily uh, to work with them to build a list to go and target. Kelly had, began to build a team of uh, outbound hunters and also the account management team focused on growing existing customers. So the good news, bad news, was, bad news was that we were pretty good at that. Kelly in particular was pretty good at that. And so what happens is we bought on, I think we doubled or tripled our bookings year over year the first year that that team was in place. And, and uh, that broke some things for us. And so what we realized was we had these account managers and they were responsible for onboarding customers, upselling customers, and renewing customers. And that's three pretty big tasks that they had. And what was happening is we were now signing a new customer every month. And so they were just never really getting out of the onboarding uh, cycle. Uh, let alone doing upsell, and maybe they were like pushing renewals across the finish line. So, so what we realized is, and, and what I realized belatedly was, if you sort of supercharge this front end of the pipe and start bringing in enterprise customers, you better be prepared for that, and we weren't as prepared as we should be. So, so sort of bringing us up to current day, what we're doing is we've just hired somebody specifically to focus on onboarding, uh, and we're adding account managers so that they can more effectively upsell and do uh, new renewals. So, so that was a good learning lesson for when that enterprise team ramped. We were really happy and congratulating each other. And then after about 12 months, someone's like, can you smell fire? Like, is something burning in the house? You know, and it's like, oops, clients are burning. So, so, as, so that's where we are today, and I think the things that we've got to think about as we go forward is really sort of building these repeatable processes. So we're still a little bit guilty of being an API, and if someone likes it, we like them. We have a lot of traction in areas like ticketing and travel, uh, entertainment. We're seeing some interest you know, from, from random things like... Um, uh, energy companies, you know, now how do you pay at the pump, you know, without getting out of your car? Everybody wants to build these payment stacks. So, so we've got to sort of say, okay, we've got this inbound traffic, but let's pick some horses, let's pick some bets and really zero in. The ACES has been good, but we want to do more and be more specific. And, and that means you can build collateral and case studies and events around that. We're big in three geographies, Europe, the US and Latin America. Uh, so that's some of that's just opportunistic early customers we hired uh, that, that we won and took us into those regions. But we can do more there, take advantage of this sort of first mover that we have and lots of connectivity down there. So talking a lot about that. 
And lastly, business development. We've never done anything really effectively with the channel, with partners, business development, thinking outside the box a little bit. So um, we got somebody who's here tonight uh, whose first day was Monday, just came to us from PayPal, and he's going to be responsible for, for business development. So I think, yeah, so I think that was my last slide. Happy to take any questions about anything along the way there. <laughs>